Welcome back to Hardball and the Politics Fix. Tonight's roundtable, Jill Zuckman of the Chicago Tribune, MSNBC political analyst Michelle Bernard, and Chris Eliza of the Washington Post. And I want to start, uh, Michelle, with a brand new Newsweek poll that just came out. Obama among registered voters over John McCain, 51 to 36, a 15-point lead. The last time this poll was taken, 46 to 46. What do you attribute it to? Well, I th it's a couple of things. I think we were looking for the bounce, or, or looking for a much larger bounce right after Hillary Clinton, you know, basically dropped out of uh, dropped out of the Democratic race. So this is sort of a long time coming. But I also think that Barack Obama's got new ads out. He's beginning to, t you know, to tell more of his story. And I and I think that this is this. Uh, this is just a snapshot in time. We really don't know what's going to happen bet between now and November. I would suspect that the numbers will continue to go back and forth between he and McCain as Obama introduces himself to new voters and McCain does the same thing. And Jill, when you couple this news with the idea with the news that Barack Obama is out of public financing, he's going to spend as much as it takes, what are you thinking right now if you're in the McCain campaign? Well, first of all, I'm thinking this poll is a little bit of an outlier because we've had a whole bunch of other polls only showing a three to four point margin between the two of them. Um, in in terms of the public financing, the McCain campaign has got to be nervous about this. But they watched as Senator Clinton got outspent three to one, four to one in states like Ohio, um, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and she still managed to win. And McCain has always run as an underdog without a lot of money. So I guess they figure they're going to just keep on, you know, taping it together with, uh, with tape. And Crystal, there's a one cautionary tale on this poll. John Kerry, back in July of 04, at this point, he was up by six points over George W. Bush. Well, David, you're exactly right. And I think Michelle touched on it and, and sounded the exact sort of appropriate notes of caution which is a poll is a poll. You've got to look at the broad cross-section of where things are. My guess, it certainly seems if you look at uh, that vast majority of polling, Obama is ahead, but I don't think he's ahead by 15. One other quick thing, Michelle mentioned this as well. Obama's new ads are fascinating. It's a 60-second ad running in 18 states. These are states that include places like North Carolina, Georgia, Montana. Heck, Alaska is in that list, David. That's a state that uh, John Kerry lost by 30 points in 2004. It shows how Barack Obama is going to use his financial advantage to expand that playing field. And even if he doesn't win in some of these states, if he can force John McCain to spend significant money in them, that takes takes away money that John McCain can spend in places like Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Well, and Chris, the other thing that does is that if he's able to um, make some of these states close but lose them, we're starting to get closer to the, pop to the possibility Barack Obama wins the popular vote but loses the Electoral College. And I want to put up a graphic on the screen that shows how he might do it. Suppose Obama gets huge votes in the coastal states, Illinois and the South, but doesn't win southern states. McCain wins Republican states, uh, Texas and Georgia, but by smaller margins. McCain wins by small margins in North Carolina and Indiana. Both of them split the Midwest. Barack Obama wins Iowa, Colorado, and Virginia. McCain wins Michigan and New Hampshire. Again, Obama runs up the score in the coastal states, California, New York. Um, what happens, Michelle, if Barack Obama wins the popular vote but loses the Electoral College? How will the country deal with that? Well, I, I think it depends. We have done so much during this election cycle to talk about different demographics, and I think you're going to see different reactions in different demographic groups. I think, for example, uh, African Americans will generally be very, very upset about this. I think that, you know, after the last election cycle, most of the country was pretty unhappy, it seems, with, with just the way the system works. You will see African Americans very angered by the situation, but I think we'll also deal with it if that were to happen because it is our system of government. I think, you know, maybe some at voters in Appalachia, for example, will be quite happy with the way that the results turn out. Um, I think it's just going to, it's going to depend on who you're speaking with. You yeah. know, the fact is we went through this in 2000. There's essentially a model for what happens when you win the popular vote, but you lose the election. And I think if that were to happen, uh, the candidate who won the popular vote but lost the election would follow Al Gore's lead and and get up there and do the right thing for the country and it would be incredibly disappointing for so many people. Well, and at the same time, Chris Eliza, it would be so devastating for the Democratic Party for this to happen the, the second time out of the third election if in fact this does play out this way. It, it would, David, but the point you just made I think is an important one. I think it's an interesting possibility to talk about. I don't think it's it's ridiculous to talk about, but I also do think the fact that it hadn't happened in 100 years, it happened in 2000. I'm not saying it's, it's not going to happen in 2008. 
I just think you look back and in 100 years of elections that happened once, there's not that much to lead us to believe that in four or eight years it's going to happen twice. It may, and if it does, I think Michelle and Jill are both right. I think it would cause a major fracture uh, in the country, and, and that's exactly what I think any of us who cover politics don't want. Chris, what are we seeing in terms of these ads? Uh, Barack Obama, his first ad, he's running them in states like Montana, South Dakota, Alaska, places that I don't think Democrats have a prayer of winning in the fall. Is this just a head fake to try to force John McCain to spend some resources in places that he shouldn't normally need to? Yeah, you know, David, I think we won't know yet. The, the Obama campaign insists that it is not a head fake, that they believe that they can be competitive in some of the states you just mentioned, including in places in the South like North Carolina and Georgia. Now, uh, the calculus in North Carolina and Georgia is heavily dependent on the fact that both states have a significant African American population. Barack Obama will do extremely well there. We'll probably see his historic levels of turnout. Uh, I don't know how committed they are to it, and I don't think we'll know until we see three and four weeks on how much uh, time and money they're going to spend in the state. The thing I will say, though, is that him opting out of public financing makes it a lot easier for him to put 10 or $15 million into a state that he thinks he might have a shot at, but isn't sure. Because 10 to $15 million, if you can raise 250 or $300 million, is a lot different than 10 or $15 million if you're operating on an $84 million budget, which he would be in public financing. He sure. also needs he also needs to find states to potentially offset um, losses in places like West Virginia, maybe Kentucky, maybe even Florida. I mean, there are states where Democrats need to win in order to win the presidency that he's shown some weaknesses in, and McCain has shown a lot of strength. So he's got to change the playing field around in order to make this all come together. And I would just say that if you look at their strategy from the primaries, uh, the way they they went for all those caucus states and came up with wins in places that Hillary Clinton didn't even think to go, you got to think that they have not uh, lost sight of how you win a general election. Yeah, I think their aim is to turn as, at a minimum, turn as many red states purple as possible with the ultimate aim get, turning as many red states blue. And I think that you're going to, he is redrawing the electoral map and, and sort of, sort of uh, piggybacking on what Chris said. I think that you're going to see them really work very hard in the deep south. You know, I would say that if there's any time in our nation's history when the Democrats might have a chance in some states in the Deep South. It is during this election because of the large numbers of African Americans in states like Georgia, for example. And Michelle, the poll numbers, and we started with the Newsweek poll at the top of the segment, does that number tighten when it becomes so clear that Barack Obama, he said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to participate in the public finance system. I'm going to meet with John McCain. He never met with John McCain. He's not in the public finance system. Will that hurt him a little bit in terms of the issue of him being a sort of different kind of politics? I, you know, I don't think it's going to hurt him at all. I think it might have hurt him more if he decided not to take public financing. As much as, as so many Americans in the Democratic Party love Barack Obama, and we've also seen a lot of Republicans who changed their registration to Democrat to vote for him, um, getting over the hump of being the first African-American president is going to be quite difficult for him. And, and I think a lot of people would have questioned his judgment if given all of the things that he has going against him if he opted for public financing when he's going to need every dollar he can to try to win this race. Michelle. Jill, Chris, we'll be right back with you just on the other side of this break. We'll be back with the roundtable for more of the Politics Fix. You're watching Hardball only on MSNBC. And we're back with the roundtable for more of the Politics Fix with Michelle Bernard, Jill Zuckman, and Chris Eliza. Um, and Jill, I want to start with you. There was an Associated Press interview this afternoon with Republican Senator Chuck Hagel of Nebraska. He's an outgoing senator, something of a maverick. He's criticized the Bush administration on the war. He was asked about if he was offered to be Barack Obama's running mate. And he said, if it would occur, I would have to think about it. You'd have to consider it. It's the only thing you could do. Why wouldn't you? That is so devastating. Yeah, Michelle Bernard, I know some Republicans would say, look, Joe Lieberman was a Democrat. He's going to speak at the Republican convention. Sure, Chuck Hagel's kind of off the reservation. We'd expect him to say something like this. I think there are people that will say that, but I think the more important story about Chuck Hagel is really what we see happening within the Republican Party. We've been talking about this for several months. There is disunity in the Republican Party. We've heard so many pe people say that the party as a whole will come and everybody will rally against, uh, you know, rally around John McCain, but we still don't see that happening. And John McCain has a lot of work to do, not only within his base, but also outside of his base. And I think that Chuck, Chuck, Hagel's, Ch Chuck Hagel's statement today really exemplifies just how much work he has to do within the Republican Party. And to, you know, if he wants to win all the states that George Bush won in 2004, Chuck Hagel's statement today makes it even more difficult for him. He's got a lot of work ahead of him to do. Chris Elizabeth, do you actually see